What's up everyone, Zilly here. Just picked up the new AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3 and paired it with the ASUS X870F Strix motherboard. And I'm setting this whole thing up from scratch right now. Instead of just telling you what to do, you're literally going to follow along with me as I configure the system for the first time. Fresh build, fresh BIOS, and I'll show you every single step I take to get maximum performance out of this combo. Alright, so here's what we're working with. The 900X3, obviously the king of gaming CPUs right now, and the X870F Strix, which is in my opinion, is SUSE's sweet spot board for this CPU. First impressions, the 9800X3 box is very unpleasant looking compared to the boxes of things like the 1400KS. The X870F Strix has excellent build quality, it's a solid platform for optimization. First thing to do is BIOS updates. We're running BIOS version 1203. Before we do anything else, I'm checking if there's a newer version available because with brand new CPUs like this, BIOS updates are critical. So as expected, there's definitely gonna be a newer BIOS available. This is why step one is always checking for updates, especially with bleeding edge hardware like this. Just search your motherboard model and ensure it's the correct one by double checking what it says in system information in Windows and download the latest BIOS by going to driver and tools and BIOS and firmware, and then just looking for the latest BIOS version. For me, the latest version is 1605 at the time of recording, slightly newer than what shipped with this board. Downloading now and I'll create a FAT32 partition on my SSD labeled BIOS where I'll place the BIOS update into. So it's downloaded now, we're just gonna go to search and search disk management and just right click on your C drive and click shrink for example. All you need is 100 megabytes and then just press shrink. Right click on the unallocated space to mix, new simple volume, next, next, next. File system, ensure this sets FAT32 and then volume label, you can just change it to BIOS and then press next and finish. Then just take your BIOS update files and drag them over to the new partition that you just made and just ensure it looks like this. Back in the BIOS, all we're going to do is click advanced mode on the bottom and head over to pool at the top. Click ASUS Easy Flash 3 utility. Find the file. It's usually going to be one of these 96 megabyte ones. So as you guys can see, it's right here. Just click on the file like that. Just keep pressing yes. And it should start updating just like so. And we're flashing. This is going to take a couple of minutes, so it's a perfect time to talk about why this matters. With the 900X3 being so new, AMD is constantly improving the EGISA microcode. I've seen 5 to 10 FPS differences just from BIOS updates on X3 chips, so never skip this step. All right, so set this back up with the new BIOS. Now I'm gonna walk through this interface with you and show you exactly what I'm looking at. So head over to advanced mode on the bottom right. And this is where the real optimization happens. Let me show you the layout. So AI tweaker, this is where memory and CPU overclocking happens at. Advanced, this is where system configuration and AMD specific settings are located at. Monitor is just hardware monitoring and fan control. Boot is just boot options and secure boot settings. What I'm looking for first is making sure everything is detected correctly. CPU shows as 900X3D. Memory showing up, good. Now we're ready to start optimizing. So first head over to AI Tweaker. AI Overclock Tuner I recommend, DOCP1 or Expo1 or XMP1, whichever one that pops up for you, always choose number one. And what number one does, it loads up the primaries on your RAM sticks, but everything else is trained from your motherboard. The OCP2, Expo2, XMP2 just loads the full XMP profile from your memory sticks, which just tends to be a little bit slower compared to the motherboard training, some of the timings. So in general, just use the OCP1, XMP1, or Expo1. Now, since these RAM sticks are 7,200 megahertz RAM sticks, on AMD, that's not ideal if you're going to be using the OCP, XMP, or Expo. So for memory frequency, I'm going to be dropping this down to 6,000 just to stay in that one-to-one -one ratio range with the Infinity Fabric. This gives you maximum stability and maximum performance. 
Now I'm going to set the timing. So go to VRAN timing control and we're going to scroll down. Refresh interval, select that. And I like setting it to three, two, seven, six, seven. And scroll down trdl i like setting it to 12 trds i like setting it to 8. these are solid timings for ddr5 6000 that should work with most memory kits now if we scroll down to the bottom there is one more setting that i like to change which is bank swap mode i like setting this to swap apu then go back fclk frequency on auto should be perfectly fine however if you start changing the memory frequency above 6000 you are going to have to play with the fclk frequency now let's head over to precision boost overdrive vrm throttling i like to disable this setting because it's throttling your vrms and you don't really need that precision boost overdrive i like setting this to enhancement and then thermal limit setting it to level one then CPU boost clock override set to enabled positive. This is going to increase the precision boost overdrive maximum boost clocks. So we're able to hit 5.4 gigahertz on the CPU. Then max CPU boost clock override, make sure to type 200 for that. Now I'll scroll down and head over to curve optimizer. I like setting this to all cores. And this is where we can get a little bit of extra performance just by undervolting our processor. What I like to do is setting the sign to negative and just starting off with a negative 15 all core optimizer magnitude. Now this is very conservative conservative, and it should work on most CPUs. This undervolts the CPU slightly, which often lets it boost higher while running cooler. Now press escape twice. For tuning's configuration for gaming, make sure to set this to legacy and then scroll down. Now. Here's the important part, turbo game mode. You'll see this option here and a lot of people enable it thinking the settings automatically equals better. Let me explain why I don't enable it on Ryzen 7s or under like a 900X 3D or a 7800X 3D. Turbo game mode disables SMT, that's simultaneous multi-threading. The 900X 3D has eight cores and 16 threads. If I enable turbo game mode, I drop to eight threads total. That's fine for a 16 core CPU like a 9950X3D where you're still left with plenty of threads, but the 900X3D, no way. Modern games and productivity tasks need those threads and often have weird micro stutters when disabling SMT on AMD. So turbo game mode stays off as we can do the rest of the settings it does manually. Now let me show you the other settings I'm configuring while we're here. Go to advanced and then go to CPU configuration disable PSS support and disable SVM mode. NX mode, please leave enabled. Some anti-cheats do use this, so it's better off enabled. SVM mode is related to virtualization. So if you need it for blue stacks or Google Play games, leave it enabled. Then go back, go to PCI subsystem settings. And for the games I'm playing with my 9070 XT, I'm probably gonna keep a resize bar support enabled for testing. However, if you're on a NVIDIA graphics card and you use a lot of games, then I recommend disabling above 4G decoding and disabling resize bar support. They're pretty much useless 99% of the time and they hurt 1% lows. Go back, go to USB configuration, legacy USB support, you can set this to auto, then go back, go to onboard devices configuration. We want to disable the first two settings right here that say ASPM. ASPM is a power saving feature for your PCIe ports. Then scroll down. Both of the USB power delivery states, I like turning them off. It's a personal preference choice at the end of the day. Go back, go to NB configuration, and to avoid issues with games just hiccup hiccuping and picking different graphics cards, I recommend disabling the integrated graphics on your CPU unless you use them. 99% of people do not use the integrated graphics, which is the display port or HDMI port on your motherboard. So if you're a normal person and you use a graphics card, disable the integrated graphics to avoid issues and reduce latency. Go back, go to AMD CBS, and I like disabling global C-state control. I've seen plenty of people recommending it to leave auto or enabled. For my testing, I've seen better results with disabled, especially with latency. So just disable it. IOMMU, this is the same thing as SVM mode. It's related to virtualization and some security features. I like disabling it. ECC, this is error correction for DDR5. So if you're going to be overclocking your memory, you need to disable this even if you don't want to. 
then app compatibility database i'm not gonna go over it right now but just set to disabled as you most likely will not need it now if i press f6 it's going to bring up the pu fan control what i'm doing is setting my cpu cooler to full speed especially on amd with precision boost overdrive how it works is that the lower temperatures that you have higher the boost clock of the cpu is going to be so lower temperatures basically equals more fps so in that case i recommend everybody set your cpu fan and aio pump to full speed everything else can honestly be set to turbo as it won't really hurt anything Now let's head over to tool at the top and go to auto install ASUS utilities. I like disabling all of this because you don't really need any of these ASUS utilities and they're most likely bloatware. Then all we're going to do is go back, go to ASUS user profile, and we're just going to name this profile name, bio settings, or you can name it silly video, go to save to profile, press enter, press yes, and then just click save changes and reset. Now, here's what I want to show you. The actual performance differences between stock BIO settings and our optimized configuration. I ran some tests before we started this optimization, so let's... Let me show you the difference our BIOS optimization makes in actual games. In Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 1080p, stock BIOS settings give us 321 average FPS, 1% 1 low of 263. Frame times were inconsistent with some stuttering. Now with optimized BIOS settings, we're getting an average FPS of 368, 1% 1 low of 295, and smooth, consistent frame times. That's a 47 FPS improvement, nearly 15% better performance just from BIOS optimization and without any overclocking. Stock BIOS settings in Fortnite at 1080p, average FPS 993.7, 1% low 595, lots of frame drops during builds and explosions. Optimized bio settings, average FPS 1049, 1% 1 low 605.2. Stable performance even in chaotic scenarios. 55.3 FPS improvement, that's a 5% better performance. Surprisingly, as long as my Windows is optimized, which I'm currently running my optimized Windows, Fortnite runs great on stock BIOS for these PC specs with the new performance mode. However, legacy performance mode has a lot of stutters on AMD Radeon GPUs. The memory optimization and precision boost overdrive settings are doing exactly what we want. Better performance, more consistent frame times, and higher frame rates. Now, full transparency, not everything always goes perfect on the first try. Let me show you what I'd do if we ran into issues. If the system didn't boot after our changes, I would press the clear CMOS using the button on the motherboard in the back. Start without XMP, DOCP, or Expo and do the settings one step at a time. If we had memory instability, I'd make sure sticks are in slots 2 and 4. I'd make sure the RAM sticks are not above 6,000 or drop them down to 6,000. And make sure to have the latest BIOS update for our motherboard. If temperatures were too high, turn up the fan speeds using Q fan control, check the thermal paste application, and consider checking out the CPU cooler or replacing it with a better one. The key is methodical testing, change one thing at a time, test stability, then move on to the next optimization. This setup is now dialed in but it's not a set and forget situation here's what i'll be doing going forward monthly i'll just monitor temperatures during heavy gaming sessions keep an eye on system stability and every few months i'd benchmark comparison to make sure performance isn't degrading and clean up the dust so we've got a perfectly optimized 900 x 3 d system ddr5 6000 running stable cpu boosting properly temperatures under control and gaming performance that's absolutely crushing it this is exactly the level of optimization i bring to every client system the difference between stock settings and proper tuning is massive we're talking 10 to 15 percent performance improvements just from bios configuration what do you think of this setup process drop your questions in the comments i love helping people get the most out of their hardware and if you want this level of optimization for your own system check out the consultation services in the description hit like if following along helped you optimize your own build and subscribe for more real-time pc building and optimization content and i'll catch you in the next one